Next trivia question. What do all these people, these celebrities have in common? Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like Andy's just knocking off all the trivia. Like, no problem. They're all named Jason. So pick your favorite Jason. Uh, he's up there. Anyone figure out yet what the, uh, the three things that I didn't tell you were all had in common? The Gardener Expressway, the Rose Garden. Yeah, they all have the word uh, garden uh, in it. You should sign up for the trivia uh, event. <laughs> you, you, you may just win, given the competition. <laughs> Everyone's name here is Jason, and I want to focus on this guy named Jason in our scripture passage today. Jason takes in Paul and Silas as a guest in his home, when they're traveling through Thessalonica. And it's no small act of hospitality because Paul and Silas, you could call them troublemakers. They're stirring things up. They're saying things that shouldn't be said. And as if you're paying attention to the story, it falls on Jason to help sort things out. Now, the word Jason... Uh, in the Hebrew, comes from the word Yah, Yahweh, so the Lord, God, and this verb, Yasha, which means to save. So if you meet any Jasons, their name means the Lord's salvation, or the Lord saves, or the Lord heals. There's a little trivia bit uh, for you. Let's talk about uh, what happens in the story and see what we can get out of it for our own lives as the church. We're not the early church, we're the, we're the late church. So in the scripture passage I read, the crowd of, the crowd of ruffians, of ne'er-do-wells, of uh, what else in Bible study? They, they had all kinds of uh, troublesome names depending on the translation. But the rubble rousers, they form a mob and they drag Jason out of his home because they're looking for Paul and Silas. And here's their complaint. These people, Paul and Silas, who have been turning the world upside down, have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. Jason takes the heat for the trouble that Paul and Silas are making. And he's giving them shelter. He's obviously hiding them. So here's what I want us to focus on this morning. How to be a Jason. The world needs Jasons, and churches need Jasons. What is the anatomy of being a Jason? Let's take a look at that. And there's really just two simple things I want to point to. Jason is that person who says, don't touch them, they're with me. Have you ever had someone like that in your life? Someone, maybe it's your first days of high school, you know, you're that vulnerable grade nine, and maybe your next door neighbor a year older than you who's grown up with you. Make sure that at break time, by your locker, he stands there by you and he says, no one touches this guy, he's under my protection. You know? Maybe you've been that person uh, who, I don't know, like maybe when you're going out to the club uh, and you vouch for the people that you're taking, they're with me, don't worry, I got them covered. You perhaps have been or you perhaps have received that kind of care. Someone looking out for you. Someone who will say to you, yeah, they're with me. They're with me. And, and what it does is it's an offer of safety. You realize, okay, 
I, I don't have to worry in grade nine walking down the hallway that someone's gonna have it out for me. Someone's vouched for me. And, and that's what Jason is doing. That's what a Jason does by being God's health, by being God's care for us. But Jason does something else in this story. Jasons are the people who will absorb the consequences of your actions. They vouch for you, and when you go and mess up, the Jason's the person who says, okay, you, you, you screwed up, you, you tripped the biggest bully in the school accidentally, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Because they know that the vulnerable person can't really handle, can't absorb all of the consequences of their misdeeds. Jason's the person who steps in and they'll cover for you. They'll cover the liability. That's what it means to be a Jason. Don't worry, they're with me. And if you got any beef with them, come talk with me. So this is all about hospitality. Being a Jason means hospitality, being God's hospitality. And that's what Jason in the story has done. These strangers come to town. Jason allows them in. I wonder, you know, what's going on in Jason's life? It sounds to me like Jason isn't happy in Thessalonica and that he's, he's open to someone coming and shaking things up. You know, he's probably got his own agenda, but he welcomes them in and provides hospitality. When you're providing hospitality, like Jason, there's a roof over the head and he provided them with some food, taking care of their bodies. And we're all used to that. When we think of hospitality, we think that, come on into my house, you know, sit at my table, I've prepared a wonderful meal, for you, we'll enjoy the comfort uh, of my home. But hospitality is not only about the body, providing for the, the physical needs of other people, it's also about providing for what's inside of people, for their heart, for their soul. The ability to, sure, look at someone and say, ah, oh, you look like you're tired, you need a place to rest. Ah, you look like you're hungry. You need some food. But to look at someone and to see in their eyes, hmm, you look like you're hurting. You, you look like you're, you're lost. You look like you, you need some care, some, something to, to hold you together. That's an important part of hospitality also. So, if you are interested in being a Jason. It's pretty straightforward, but it's not an easy thing to do. Vouch for someone. Take them under your wing. Say, they're with me, and realize that that comes with some responsibility. I may have to clean up their mess also, but you know what? It's worth it. And your hospitality towards them is about more than just caring for their physical needs but to be open to what's going on inside their hearts. That's what it means to be uh, Jason. So don't, I'll zoom out on this, so don't, don't be angry at me right now that you can't see the text. Jasons are needed in congregations. Again, we're, we're reading a story about Jason during the early church when it is, it's in this growth stage. And here we are, 2,000 years later, and we're unfortunately reading it as church in its decline. And so when we read about the early church, we read about people like Jason, I think the question pops up, how do we do this? How do we provide hospitality for people who are wandering through our community? And so what I want to talk about is what are simple ways? This is going to be a really practical conversation. Well, it's not a conversation. I'm talking. You're listening. 
a practical look at what can I do on a Sunday morning to be a Jason? Now, you've heard me say that, or maybe you haven't heard me say it, but I'm not interested in figuring out how to get more money out of the congregation. I'm not interested in worrying about volunteers and getting more time out of people in the congregation. Those are byproducts of something else. Welcoming new people into the congregation. And here's the truth. The majority of people here, sitting in this room right now, probably feel uncomfortable inviting someone else to church on Sunday morning. Trust me, I get it. I know how uncomfortable it can be. But if you are uncomfortable inviting, if you, your, your thought is, well, I hope someone else does it, your opportunity then is to be looking out for new people showing up on Sunday morning that either have been invited by someone else or are just taking that difficult risk of showing up in a strange place. And church can be a strange place. So one thing that you can do is just look around. Not just for, are my friends here today? But who's here that I don't recognize? And I know that most of you are pretty shy. And I get it. You see someone who's new and you're, you're hesitant to, I don't know if I want to walk up to them. They don't want to talk with me. And I get that. But if you're the shy person, then there's still things that you can do to help out those who aren't shy. Things like, how do I volunteer to make sure that there's coffee for all of these caffeine addicts in the congregation? How to make sure that there's some, some cookies or squares for people to munch on while they are sitting down in the Golden Jubilee room after church, getting to know each other? How can you create some hospitality for others? A simple thing that you can do. How can you make the, how can you make the feel of this room, sanctuary during worship, a welcoming inviting place you know just by your demeanor how can you out in the community make sure that you give Strathroy united church a good reputation there's many things that we can do so that someone will be inclined to think well maybe i'll try Strathroy united church or maybe i'll stay because it seems like a friendly place so you can support those people who are not shy, who are outgoing, and will say hello to people. So let's say you're one of those people. You, you don't mind inviting people out. And, um, but you're saying to yourself, I'm open to doing it, but I've run out of people. I don't know anyone else. I've burned through all of my friends. But again, you, you're the type of person who when someone new shows up on, on Sunday morning, you, you feel comfortable walking up to them and just saying, hello, and having just a friendly, normal conversation. So looking for people who are new because you're not shy and saying hello. It doesn't have to be some grand conversation. I would think, and I know from you know, years past, when I show up somewhere, it's nice if someone just says hello to me need to be a long involved conversation but maybe you're a connecting type of person you're the person who won't hesitate to say tell me about yourself come on have some caffeine uh, and some sugar downstairs in the golden jubilee room after church and you extend the invitation maybe that's you and i encourage you to do that being a jason if i'm to dream into it means you get to a point where maybe you'll invite people out for a meal. Maybe you'll invite them into your home as the relationship starts to grow. So, to be a Jason, there's ways that we can do it in this congregation. And I encourage each of us not to forget that role that we have of being the people who help other people to
find sanctuary to, to find care. Jason he said, they're with me. Someone's done that for you. Someone was a Jason for you when you showed up in a strange place called a church. And, and look at you now, all ready to sign up for trivia contests and, and show your knowledge. Amen. Thank you.